Hello, my name is Jerry Kreiner. I'm professor and chair of the Department of Thoracic Medicine and Surgery at the Lewis Katz School of Medicine at Temple University in Philadelphia. And it's my privilege today to speak to you about low-dose CT scanning and can it lead to pulmonary disease interception. These are my grants and consultation, my declarations, you can take a look at that. So overall, because of age and smoking uh, shared burdens, patients who are candidates for low-dose CT imaging are also at an increased risk of comorbid conditions that are a result of um, smoke exposure, COPD and asthma, and because these patients are older, osteoporosis, hypertension, um, and congestive heart failure are also um, other factors that can coexist. So a multifaceted low-dose CT program for cancer screening can also use readily available questionnaires and information from the CAT scan itself to diagnose and treat these common comorbid conditions. And the detection and quantification of some of these comorbid conditions, for example, presence of COPD and degree of airflow obstruction and presence and extent of emphysema may also help us to predict lung cancer risk in screening and or aid therapeutic decision-making if patients do have lung cancer and need therapy. <clears throat> so overall, we do the LDCT to diagnose early lung cancer, but because of we're doing the imaging, other things can be gleaned from that test. We can look at emphysema versus airways disease, we can use it to phenotypically describe our patient population in terms of exacerbation profiling or rapid decline or a higher risk of death, bronchiectasis, smoking-related interstitial lung disease, and a variety of non-pulmonary parenchymal diseases as listed here can also be determined and assessed by the low-dose CT scan performance. Overall, because, uh, besides the comorbid conditions, COPD and lung cancer screening also share the problem of both being underdiagnosed in the U.S. population. We think that about 12 and a half million people presently are diagnosed with COPD, but we believe that the prevalence of, of COPD is much higher than that, maybe double than that. Up to 24 million people were estimated in 2006 of perhaps having occult COPD. Um, and most of these patients that are underdiagnosed are younger. There's 70% of these are expected to be less than 65 years of age. So lung cancer and COPD both share the same problem in the U.S. population. Both are thought to be severely underdiagnosed. Underdiagnosis of COPD has important ramifications, as shown by this analysis of the NHANES data. In patients that were underdiagnosed with obstructive lung disease, as shown in the red, they have a mortality that's similar to those who have diagnosed obstructive lung disease. And that's unfortunate and may represent a missed opportunity because these underdiagnosed patients are reported to have good to excellent health status, have lower comorbidity burden by analysis, have better lung function, and also are unfortunately are of racial and ethnic minorities. So this may represent a missed opportunity of underdiagnosed obstructive lung disease that if we recognized it and gave them treatment, we can improve their mortality. One of the ways to do that has been provided by Diab and colleagues looking at the CAN-COLD cohort and looking at the underdiagnosis and overdiagnosis of COPD. And what they did based on their analysis, they recommend this plan using a combination of clinical history, a survey of symptoms, performing spirometry, and using the imaging data to come up with the correct diagnosis of COPD and avoiding the overdiagnosis of COPD. There's other important findings for patient health on the HRCT. They also can be gleaned. The prognostic uh, evidence of bronchiectasis is clear, as shown in this paper by Martinez and Garcia. If you have the presence of structural bronchiectasis, your likelihood of, of death is much higher. And also, if you have a greater burden of emphysema, you're more likely to fit into that patient group of rapid decline in FEV1 or worsening lung function overall. So we can get important information from that study in terms of structural evidence of, of COPD and its impairment, both airway as well as parenchymal impairment, to estimate the prognosis of our patients and perhaps do a better job in, in improving that uh, prognosis. Well, what can you do to intercede for uh, patients who may have COPD who are undergoing lung cancer screening. 
Well, this was provided by our colleagues from the UK who did a cross-sectional analysis of about 1,000 individuals who had been smoking within five years and had a low-dose CT scan for uh, lung cancer screening. As you can see, it's about 986 participants. 57% uh, of these were um, found to have COPD. And the important feature, feature of this study was that two-thirds of these individuals previously did not have diagnosed COPD. These patients had, um, two-thirds of them had emphysema on the CT scan, and half of them had symptoms and half of them did not. So in this cohort of 986 patients, of the 560 patients who were found to have COPD, about 400 of these previously did not have diagnosed COPD, and importantly, about two-thirds of that population had structural evidence of disease from emphysema. Well, if you look at this study even further, these patients that were not diagnosed with COPD, many of them had more moderate to severe airflow obstruction shown here in the um, paler blue bars overall, about 50% of these people overall. And if you look at the prevalence of emphysema in the mild groups, uh, about 60% of them had evidence of mild to moderate emphysema. So fairly advanced disease in a group of patients before who didn't know that they had COPD, which may feed back to what we talked about originally, that the underdiagnosis of obstructive lung disease carries a high morbidity and mortality when looking at the NHANES data. If you look at the comorbidities of patients in this cohort and lung cancer screening program in the UK, about 10% of the individuals overall had undiagnosed asthma, they had undiagnosed coronary heart disease, and they had undiagnosed osteoporosis. Features of the disease overall <clears throat> that are important and are evident on structural imaging. They also had a high prevalence of hypertension and hypercholesterolemia, and also diabetes, other important targets that can be, once identified, can be appropriately treated. And if you look at the symptoms overall in the patients who were in the undiagnosed cohort overall, Things like dyspnea, which was found in the underdiagnosed cohort, the lighter group with uh, no emphysema, 28% of these patients overall had evidence of, of dyspnea, <clears throat> as opposed to 37% of those who did have emphysema overall. And this group that had emphysema and had dyspnea may be treated better by other forms of treatment, such as lung volume reduction, or even in some cases with severe disease, lung transplantation, once it's identified rather than just continuing with no treatment or just medical treatment alone. So how can you scale this up and do this rather than doing qualitative imaging? Well, this was shown by Metz and colleagues to use um, AI, artificial intelligence, in their lung cancer screening program in the Netherlands to look at features on the CAT scan in terms of airway wall uh, dimensions, airway wall thickness, and prevalence of emphysema. And as you can see here in this aggregate assessment overall, fairly good sensitivity, specificity, and higher positive and negative predictive values were found with using automated artificial intelligence to score and quantitate the degree of obstructive lung disease or prevalence of emphysema. Using these categories may help us. This is a recent proposal by the COPD gene um, looking at defining COPD using a broader range of features, such as exposure, imaging data, symptoms, and spirometry to classify different groups of patients who may have COPD. And the attempt of doing this is to really look at patients who might have milder form of the disease, maybe earlier manifestations of the disease, so that we can intercede an earlier date before the disease becomes fixed and can improve patients' outcomes with earlier modifiable treatments. There's other things that we can find besides lung abnormalities on the CAT scan for, uh, for cancer screening. And again, in COPD gene, by using coronary artery calcium scoring on non-contrast, non-cardiac gated HRCTs, there was an identification of greater calcium burden that was associated with higher mortality when these patients were followed up six to eight years of follow-up. So cardiac manifestations of presence of coronary heart disease may be important. Other features are also important. Again, data also gleaned by COPD gene. In the top right, you can see the presence of interstitial lung disease in patients that are smoking is found in about 8% of the population. You can see the presence of 
Muscle mass wasting, especially in patients with more severe degree of airflow obstruction, is found by estimation of pectoralis muscle area on thoracic imaging. And you can look at the presence of osteopenia, osteoporosis, and bony fractures of the vertebral spine and come up with an estimate of bone health overall. So many features, both parenchymal, pulmonary parenchymal, and non-pulmonary parenchymal can be estimated by HRCT to give a global estimate of patient's health. So how could we work up these comorbid conditions? Well, there's validated quick questionnaires for COPD population screening, diabetes pretest questionnaires, cardiac disease questionnaires, and strong bones osteoporosis questionnaires that can take minutes while patients waiting for the low dose CT scan to be filled out. And if these screening data are positive and findings from the HRCT are positive, then further derivative studies, spirometry with um, assessment, uh, coronary ar ar artery calcium is present, and these other biomarkers can be done. And if presence of osteoporosis or obesity are done, then these other features of obstructive sleep apnea, osteopenia, and osteoporosis can be performed. So it's a gateway or entry into global health assessment for many patients who are eligible for low-dose CT screening. In addition, all the patients who come in for uh, low-dose cancer screening, if they're still a current smoker, then they should be ascertained if they are for enrolling in a smoking cessation program. Well, I've talked about how we can intercede for non-cancer issues in terms of this patient population that comes in for cancer screening with using a low-dose uh, CT. But the flip side is also true. If we look at patients and we identify if they have COPD and have airways obstruction or have presence of emphysema, we can use that as a tool to better enhance the risk of the patient population we're screening to detect lung cancer overall. Let me tell you what I mean. This is in a CT arm of the NS NLST study looking at COPD status. And it was found in that study, if you had COPD, your likelihood of having lung cancer was two times greater if you did not have COPD, indicating COPD as a risk factor for patients with lung cancer. We can do a little bit better with that as shown in this study overall with creating a COPD lung cancer screening score. And this was done by using cohorts in Spain as well as using cohorts in Pittsburgh in the US overall. And what they developed with this scoring system, if you factored in a lower BMI, a pack year history greater than 60 years, an age greater than 60 years, and evidence of emphysema on the CAT scan, the patients in this higher tier seven to 10 had a greater risk of lung cancer, a greater predictive uh, risk of lung cancer compared to patients with this lower tiered scoring system. And if we look at how the scoring system does overall, we find that compared to the NLST scoring system overall, with using this enhanced scoring system, as I just described to you, our likelihood of detecting lung cancer and identifying patients at risk for lung cancer on LDCT is more robust and higher. So perhaps factoring in all the, all the information from the CAT scan, just not the nodule itself, but the global health of the patient and whether they have COPD or emphysema can further enhance the predictive value of identifying a nodule as being uh, potentially lung cancer. So overall we, can, overall, we can think of an enhanced evaluation of patients for lung cancer screening. Screen patients based on NLST data, as well as consideration of whether they have a history of COPD or presence of emphysema on their LDCT overall. We can also assess for other comorbid conditions, as shown here with using these companion tests overall with screening studies and derivative studies if, if further needed. And I think overall, by using this combination of information, we can improve the global health of our patients who come in who need LDCT. And if they are found to have a nodule with, with uh, cancer, help us to decide what are the best treatment modalities and the patient's risk and benefits with the different modalities based on their lung health as well as their global health overall. Thank you very much.